Hello, and welcome to the Light Heart Art Sewing School, where I take you through a simple pattern, step by step, give you lots of tips, and you'll learn a lot and have fun. There are so many different burrito babies you can make. I thought I'd take you to the burrito baby bar. First, you're going to pick the baby you want to make in the fabric. I'll show you a few up close. There's all kinds. Then you're going to wrap it up in its little cover. It's not made to come off and be played with, but you could fiddle with that if you want. Then we're going to add a topping, which would be a little hat. On the new baby pattern, it tells you how to make these cute little animal hats. And the Christmas one tells you how to make the reindeer hat and stocking caps. And then it says, add spice and enjoy. Spice could be little wings or a star buttons, bows, anything you want. You can make a little welcome to your new little one. You're putting this on top of a package. You can make it look like someone that you'd like to honor. I put some of mine on a wreath that says grandchildren complete life circle of love. Problem is, I have four and a half more grandchildren than on here, so I need to make some more. So let's make some together. Well, let's get started. First thing you'll need to do is take your pattern and open it up and cut out the body pattern for the baby and the swaddle blanket pattern. Cut right on the line and then You'll need to choose the fabric you want for the body. I've made all skin tones before. This time I'm making my little granddaughter. So I'm going to make her this color. You'll need two pieces. If there's right sides, put right sides together and lay the baby body pattern on there. It doesn't really matter what direction and pin it securely, but make sure the pins are not sticking over the outside cutting lines. We're gonna sew with this paper pattern on the fabric. So you wanna make sure it won't shift. So make it nice and secure. It'll be easier for you. Okay, and the other thing, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up so we can sew it all at once would be whatever you want the outside of the little burrito to be. I've chosen a stripe and then the inside to be a kind of a yellow. The inside won't show much. It's just the little color that comes up behind the head. That's the liner. So it really won't show much. Maybe just a little behind the head if they're not wearing a big hat. So you'll take those two pieces of fabric each eight and a half by 10, and you'll put them right sides together and place the swaddle blanket pattern on them. If you want the stripes going across it, make it go this way because this is where you'll see. And you'll mostly see whatever is on this little thing. So if you have a particular part of the fabric you really like, that's where you want it. All right, go ahead and pin that. You'll be cutting that out though. We don't cut this baby out before we sew it. That's the difference. It's a lot easier and your lines will be much more precise. So this doesn't have to be quite as hold down. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out right outside the line because this pattern includes the sewing seam. If 
if you're making quite a few of these, you can do them in assembly line fashion. You can cut out all the swaddles at once and do all the babies in a row and do each step in a row. And then you'll be done with all of them quicker than you would if you did them one at a time. Now this little dot right here and here shows you where you won't sew. When we sew around, we're gonna sew all the way around the outside and stop at this dot and we'll start at this dot. So you can make a tiny little snip if you'd like to mark it so you don't have to guess where it is. It's not important that it's totally exact. Okay, we're setting that aside. Now on to the sewing machine. Here we are with the sewing machine <clears throat> in the pattern. <clears throat> excuse me. I originally said to trace around this paper with a fabric pen and then take off the paper and sew right on the line. I've since discovered it works just as well to sew right along the edge of the paper, not sewing on the paper, and it saves you having to get a fabric pen. So I'm going to show you that way, but you have the option to trace around it, as it says in the pattern, and sew right on that line. There's two dots that we're leaving that section open at the bottom so we can turn it and stuff it. We're going to put the needle down right at this dot right here and you want kind of a tight stitch maybe 12 stitches per inch or so mine says 2.2 .2 on a Janome and then you're going to start putting the, by putting the needle down you can either turn the um, wheel at the right of your machine or you can push the button that puts it down like that okay sometimes you have to hold your two threads to keep them from jumping away so it's always better to be safe than sorry so go ahead and very slowly stitch and go do a little back stitch to secure it okay now we're going to go forward very slowly just around the outline of the paper when we get to the curve of the neck we're going to put the needle down right in that little niche go slow enough so you can really control the machine you're going to go right along the edge of the paper don't panic if it's a little bit off, it's okay. This is a very forgiving pattern. We're getting close, and I'm gonna, if you get close and you're a little worried, use the little wheel at the end of your machine and do the last stitch with that so you can control it and put your needle down. Then you lift up the feed dog. You a little crank under here, and you can turn the whole thing while the needle's down and it can't slip out of place. Continue slowly around to the corner of the ear, and again, your needle's down. Lift up the feed dog, turn it around, and just go slowly around the outside of the ear. If you have to stop and turn it a little bit with the needle down so it can't shift, sometimes on a curve, I'll stop every, in, every stitch or two just to make sure that I've got a good curve. Because on this little baby, not much shows but the head, ears, and neck. So you want them to be good, a good shape. I like to get a nice curve by turning it like that. Okay, I'm gonna turn and go around the top of the head. If you're making a hat, the top of the head shape isn't as critical. I'm taking out this pin so I can get around the, the little ball. Just going around the nice curve of the head. I think we're making a hat for this one, but I'm not totally sure. So I'm going to make sure I have a nice, good shape. I'm gonna keep stopping with the needle down and making a little turn, a little course correction. Okay, going around the other ear. We're almost home. If you need to, if you want to just do it with your hand, if your machine's going too fast and you feel out of control, just take a stitch, put the needle down, turn. You can do that all the way around the ear if it makes you feel more comfortable. Any tight shape 
or a certain shape, you can always do that. I'm gonna come in again, make that little thing to the neck. And if you happen to go on the paper, it's not gonna hurt anything really. It's just gonna tear out. Now we're going around, around to this other dot. Now I'll probably want to pull out that because the little ball on the end of my pin will be in the way. Now that it's an easier shape, I'm going to sew a little quicker. And truthfully, the bottom of this baby is inside the burrito, so it doesn't really matter that much. Unless you plan on making it so you can take him in and out of it, maybe putting some Velcro on, that's up to you. Okay. Now we've got that. So I can totally take off this paper. And we can cut about an eighth inch around the whole shape, just on the outside of the stitching. Be careful not to go like this and then accidentally cut over your stitching with with an end, just when you get close, use the tip of your scissors so that you don't accidentally cut through your stitching and have to do it again. When I get around here again, I'm using just the tip. I don't want to have an accident. Nobody likes to have to do something twice if they don't need to. If you've done nice little stitches that are pretty tight, you'll probably have a good shape that won't break through on the curves. That's what we want. Okay, because you're on a curve, you're gonna make a teeny little snip out all the places where, it, just the teeniest, just with the tip again. You don't wanna go through those stitches. Just above and below the ear, so it can give a nice curve to it. Maybe, little ones, a couple little teeny ones on the head, but make sure you don't snip through your stitching. And then again on this ear, a little teeny one above and below, maybe halfway around. And the rest doesn't matter much unless you're planning to take off its wrapper and show people how it looks in there. All right, now we're going to turn the baby inside out. I think it's easiest to do it with a little dowel or a chopstick. You want something that won't break through. So sometimes it's nice to use a pencil with a nice soft eraser. It kind of grabs the fabric a little bit. You can push it through. I don't know if you want to wait for me to do this. I may just do it off camera and bring it back. And you can do yours too. But when you get to the ear and the head, you don't want to push too hard. You want to kind of smooth, smooth along, like run it along the curve, kind of get a nice curve. And we will be ironing it, but not quite yet. Okay, just gently push out the ear, not too hard, or you might burst through, depending on your stitching. Here's the other one. Okay. There we go. While I'm here at the sewing machine, I'm going to go ahead and sew the baby swaddle. So here's the shape we've got with the little point. And I'm going to start on the place I snipped down here. And sew all the way around. If you can't find the little place where the dot was, just look on your pattern. And I'm gonna sew about a quarter inch, half inch, just a little bit from the edge. I, I'm keeping my presser foot going along the edge. This is a rather forgiving project. When you get to a corner, put the needle down again, like we did on the baby, and turn it, and just go along. When I 
do this is about a quarter inch seam and that is fine. Most projects are a little more exact than this. stop where the other dot was around there okay now on this one we have corners and when you have corners and you're turning something inside out the corners will make a, a lot of fabric bunched up and it won't get a clean corner so very carefully not snipping over your your um, seam it's easier to see on this yellow side I'm going to snip a little of the extra fabric off. I'm not going through my stitching. I'm just trying to make it less bulky. I'm going to clip the corners like this that come to a point, again with the tip of my scissors so I do not go through that stitching. Up here again, I'm going to carefully snip across a little bulk of the corner but not going through my stitching and go around and can make sure I do that everywhere very carefully. And same here. If you snip through your stitching, you'll have to stitch that part again. All right, I'm gonna turn that inside out as well. That's easy. It's got a big opening in the bottom because that part won't show. Now, if you are wanting to make a burrito baby that you take this on and off and you want to put some Velcro or snaps or buttons or something on, you'll want to make a smaller opening and maybe stitch it shut so it looks a little neater. But this part is hidden down there once it's on the baby, so it doesn't matter and you have options. Just going around with my pencil eraser. You can use whatever you want. And when it gets pokey in the corner, if it's not going to poke through, if you're really careful and you don't want to put a lot of color in there, you can use something to poke out the corner just a little. Now we will press this, but you'll see just in general that when we stuff the baby, it's going to go like this. It's going to fold up. We're going to wrap it around. It's going to be just generally like that, but with a stuffed baby. All right, back to the ironing board. Okay, here we are at my <laughs> sort of emergency ironing board, because I want you to be able to see. I'm gonna give the baby a little bit of a press just to make the ears and head a little bit better shape. And I'll go ahead and press the swaddle, give it a little bit of crisp corners. Wouldn't want a wrinkly swaddle, never. All right, now I'm going to start putting a little bit of stuffing into the baby's head. It's good to start small because if you push in bit too big of wads, it, it looks both kind of bumpy. You want a nice, smooth head and a little bit to go in each ear just to have a good shape. You can always add more later. And next we'll be making the face. You see, I've changed some of the ways I do things from my pattern. I've just found some ways that I like a little bit better. Um, I used to use paint on the end of a shish kebab stick and just make a little stamp. But I almost am liking just a tiny dot. It has to be a quick dot or it will bleed. That means spread out of just a little permanent pen. So, You'll have lots of choices of what you want to do. Okay, that head looks pretty good. 
and we'll go ahead and just put some more in the body. Doesn't matter so much if you put that in quickly. You know, the thing about making a project yourself is that if you like it, it's right. If you want to do something totally different, you can do it. And it doesn't matter if it's the way I did it or not because it's yours. So, and the one nice thing also is if you happened to try to make um, some eyes and you didn't like them, you could always flip it around and use the other side as long as you made a hat or something covered it up. But I just made two little dots kind of where I want the eyes to be. And we'll go from there. All right, I'm back. And I like to use a tiny pointed gray or black pen. That's what I just like. You can make the color of the eyes. You can do whatever you like. But I usually make a line kind of straight across from the top of the ear. And I space them about half an inch apart. I just make a quick little dot. You can make yours bigger or smaller. I just kind of like the little one. So there I make that. And then the fun part. You can use actual makeup blush or you can use something like this pink chalk. But um, And you can always take it and test it on their rear end where it's not going to show. See if you like the color. Sometimes um, I like to make it um, a little bit browner color if it's a boy. <laughs> and I have some blush that has more tawny colors and that's fun too. I usually make a little, a little circle of the blush. You can do it however you like. And if it ever needs a touch up, you know how to do it. Next, we'll work on hair. This little girl has very blondish hair. I have a great collection of all kinds of yarns from curly and kinky and red and black and brown. This one's just right for her, but whatever you need is the right one. So you just take a little bit of it. Sometimes I like to tie in a little knot so that some of it's together and I then I just fuzz it up because baby hair is kind of fluffy kind of pull it apart just make it kind of look more like a little chicken fluff hair <laughs> you can do however whatever looks right to you is good so this is one of those things I just kind of like to fuzz it up and make it a little bit less like a piece of yarn. And then you can, what I call addition it on the baby's head. See if that's good. Because babies don't usually have a lot of hair. Well, it looks pretty good. I might put a little bow on hers or I may have it a little longer so it can peek out from under a hat. So not quite sure. But in any event, you will, when you get it how you want it, you can put a little piece of glue behind the head and make it stay. You can have more hair or less hair than this, whatever you like. But that'll probably be good for her. I'm going to get some glue and put it in place. Of course, you're free to make a mouth if you want. And even if I decide to put a bow on her, you might want a hat. There's all sorts of cute animal hats and I will show you the basic way to make a hat. It's really easy. If you have a cute little baby sock with a pattern on it somewhere, you can use that or you can use some stretchy fabric that's left over from a t-shirt or something new. Um, you just, you don't need much of it. You just want the color you like. Even a little felt would probably work. Let the glue dry and you can be thinking about that. Meanwhile, I think I'll put her, whoop, 
items in the swaddle. Now your swaddle may open a different direction depending on which side you used for the inside. But in any event, can you see this? Okay. The baby's head goes down a little from the point and the short side, whichever one it is, wraps over and if, her, if it's covering up too much of her ear, slide up a little bit. Then you're going to, now see it doesn't matter that this is open down here, that you can still see the stuffing because it's going to be covered up. But if yours won't be, you'll want to stitch that closed. Put that over. Now you're going to fold up the bottom. And then you kind of tuck that under a little. And this comes across and around. And then you've got a cute little burrito baby in the fabric that you picked. And you can decide if you want a hat or not or what you want to do next. If you want to hang it as an ornament, you would do what I'll show you next. For now, I'm pinning the back of this little swaddle till I stitch it. I'll put a few stitches in it to hold it. And I don't really want a hanger on this one, but if one is going to be an ornament or a celebration of a baby's first Christmas or something, um, you might want one. These two have hanging strings. Um, you can see this little Halloween guy. It's knotted and just stitched behind the head and then it's covered by the back. So let's do that. Also, just for fun, you can see that someone, actually it was me, <laughs> put on some little buttons and a little decorative Thing. This was a orange and black sock that I had. One of my children outgrew, so you can use fun colors for the hats. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so how long do you want the hanger to be? You want it to, if you want to loop it, you want it to be about that long. Just make a loop. Measure how long you want it. Doubled. Cut it. And just tie a little knot to hold it together. We should have made it a little longer. Oh well. <laughs> there we go. Here's a knot. Okay, so that knot will hold it a little more securely. And if I was going to put it on this one, I would put it behind her head and either stitch it or have a little dot of glue, and then it would be something that could hang up. But I don't. All right. Now on to hats. I just wanted to show you how many fun socks there are in the world and they make great hats. There's socks like this that one of my children wore. Some of these, I found these little ones at the Dollar Tree. These are socks that I've cut up and used for other projects. Anyway, there's so many cute socks in the world. You may look at stretchy socks differently after you've done some of these projects. Christmas socks, Valentine socks, you can find them really inexpensively. And for the family hangout patterns, you can make all sorts of sweaters and hats for them too. All right, so I decided that this little girl would be cute in a little kitty hat. I'm going to show you how to make one. It's really easy. In the pattern, this was right here, You'll see that there's lots of shapes of ears and animal nose, pumpkin stem. <laughs> the basic taller hat and the short hat, they're both self-lined. That means that inside it's all lined. You don't have to worry about turning, turning something under. It's never going to come apart. So we're going to make the shorter hat but the tall one is just the same, it's just taller. All right, so the first thing you do is you cut out the pattern and you see that this says stretch of fabric this way. So this little piece of gray t-shirt fabric, it could be new or used from a t-shirt, stretches sideways. So you need to put it 
the same direction stretching as it says on the pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that and cut it out. Now, if you were just going to make a little sock hat for someone, for example, some of the little socks almost just fit right on. If you don't mind their hair being covered up, if their hair is covered up and you want it to show, just put the hat on, then stick a little piece under there to the side or where you want it. If it's, if it kind of looks cute, snuggle down over their face. So then you would just take it, turn it inside out, decide how high you want it, and going a little bit up from the bottom, you would sew up to a point and back down, trim off the extra, turn it over, and it's really easy to make a little pom-pom too. To make a pom-pom for a hat, just in case you end up wanting to do that, I'll show you on this, it's real easy. You can actually cut some of the same sock that you used or same with t-shirt fabric you used and just cut it in little tiny strips. Shorten it shorter than that. And then you can just sew it with thread to the top of a hat. You can show you snipped all the loops. Yeah, there's a loop I missed. And then you kind of ruffle it up a little bit and kind of push it up so it's all in one. Anyway, it's pretty easy and it looks really cute. So that's one way to do it if you just want to use a sock. But if you're going to use some stretchy fabric and make one of these self-lined hats, I guess I need that a little straighter. Come on. I'll cut it out. I should probably put more pins in the stretchy fabric is harder to cut as it kind of curls, but we can hold it down and show it who's boss. You don't want to stretch it while you're cutting it. You want it to be nice and loose under the paper pattern. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take it to the sewing machine and put the right sides together so that it looks like this and then stitch right down the side. I'm going to do that and come right back. Stay right where you are. Okay, now I've sewn it a nice little st st um, stitch, little short seam, about eighth to a quarter of an inch, just as close to the edge as I can get without being too close. Now, when you use stitch, um, stretchy fabric, particularly, if you start sewing right at the edge, it will just jam it down and eat it. It'll suck it, kind of suck it into your sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard. So the trick there is to start in a little bit and then sew a couple stitches forward, a couple stitches backward, holding your thread so that it can't be dragged down, that you can't drag that little end down into the machine. Just hold the thread and then go forward and you'll be fine. Stretchy fabric is a little harder that way. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna fold it over on itself like that. So it leaves you with a tube because you had a tube. So you had a tube like this, but we want this seam to be on the inside, covered up. So we're folding it down over itself with the seam in the middle. So you can see what I've done. And you're bringing the ends, matching them up to each other. You can just grab the little thing here. <laughs> oh, easier said than done sometimes, but here we go. 
All right, so now we've got a stretchy little, stretchy little tube and the seam is hidden. It's got one end that's turned and faced. That's going to be the brim. And the other end is all the raw edges together. You can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the seam in the center on one side because that will be the back. The front will be like this. Now we're going to sew across the top here, right across the top. And then when we turn it over, you'll have a faced hat with the seam hidden way up inside. It'll look really cute. On the pattern, there's a short hat template and a tall or medium point hat template. This it just shows you the curve that you're going to sew. You can lay it on there and just eyeball it or you can do it. Now remember, the seams in the back. This is laid on the front with the raw edges at the top. This matches the bottom. And this just shows you kind of the curve you're going to sew. You're going to start here and go up close to the top and over. Now, the thing is, before you do that, we need to put in any ears or anything that you want to be sticking out the top of the hat and catch them in that seam. So let's get them cut out. Okay, I've cut out from the pattern the cat ear shape and I'm going to, I put it on two layers of gray felt or do whatever color you like and got it cut out. You see it has quite a bit below because you want to get this lower part caught in the seam, the seam in this hat. So you have to stick it in there. And you know what? If it's not exactly right, guess what you can do? You can cut the felt a little bit more, but it's usually pretty good. Just kind of stick one up each side. You can pin it or you can just put it up. It's actually easier to do it this way. Stick it in the top by the raw edges. And if you want them to be sticking out the side a little bit on the curve, you want to aim them just a little bit to the center. Point like the kitty point ears just slightly to the center. Now, take the short hat template and you're just going to sew right, sorry, right along over that. And it should be good. Let's go do it. So I just sewed along the line. I put the template on and I went, shh, doesn't even look that even actually, but it's a moment of truth. I'm gonna trim it a little bit, cut off the threads. And we'll turn it inside out and see what she looks like. <laughs> okay. Pretty cute. I can trim the ears smaller if I want. And I want, so I'm gonna make them a little smaller. It's up to you. But you can see how easy it is to do whatever you'd like to do. So from there, all you do is, you have some little white button eyes or you can just make eyes another way. There's a little piece of rolled up t-shirt fabric just stuck on for the nose and some little thread sewn as whiskers. And voila. Let's try this on this other guy here. See how it worked.
This guy's head is smaller looking, so I just flipped up the brim, but it's nice and faced, so it's flip upable. Anyway, you can see that's the basic trick to making the hats, the lined hats. Let's see, turn it and it's nice and faced. It's all nice and smooth on the inside and you can make whatever you want on the face of it. All right. I do believe that ends our burrito baby session. Thanks for helping me make another one. Enjoy.